Let's okay. do this. Okay. And we are live. Pitch Grounders, what's going on? We are live with your favorite guest, Simeon, and your favorite host, Minank, on today's webinar that is about Google Tag Manager. And if you have watched our previous webinar of Google Tag Manager, you know how valuable it is. And if you're joining in for this webinar, then welcome. This is the part two of the Google Tag Manager series. And if you, have want, if you haven't watched the previous webinar yet, I suggest you to watch the webinar after this webinar is over. So let's wait for people to join in. Right now we are 30 seconds in this webinar and we have two people that are joining in. We are waiting for more people to join in and we are so damn excited for today's webinar. Simeon. Hi, hi. How's everything going? Everything is good. Hi, Pitch Grounders. Nice to, to be here. Now nice to, to start the second webinar on Google Tag Manager topic. So today I will continue on the next uh, the next steps which you need to to know in order to to master uh, Google Tag Manager in some direction. So yeah, everything is good. Uh, yeah, everything is normal. Awesome, awesome. So for people who are joining in right now, we are doing a webinar today that is about Google Tag Manager. So if you have any doubts about Google Tag Manager or if you don't know how to use Google Tag Manager and want to know how you can effectively use Google Tag Manager to grow your business, then this is the perfect webinar to attend because Simeon is going to show you all about Google Tag Manager. And if you're joining in for the very first time, this is the part two of the Google Tag Manager webinar series. And if you haven't watched part one yet, do not worry. I want you to watch the part one of this webinar after this webinar is finished. So yes. The, uh, all the recordings would be shared with you. And if you couldn't find the recordings for any reason, you can contact me or Simeon. That is Team Pitch Ground, our team Voxpow. And we are always, always, always here to help you out in whatever it is regarding Voxpow, regarding any other queries about Pitch Ground, et cetera. So people are joining in. Hello. That's right. Hello. So wherever you're joining in from, leave your location down below. I'm from India. Simeon is, Simeon is from Bulgaria. And where are you from? Leave a comment down below before we get started with today's webinar. That is about Google Tag Manager. Yep. So if you're joining in for the very first time, we have a very special guest with us. His name is Simeon and he is the founder of Voxpow, a tool that can enhance user experience for your website. And right now, Voxpow is on a really limited lifetime deal. And this lifetime deal, guys, will be going away soon. So before it goes off, you just got to grab this lifetime deal. <laughs> and yeah. what it does is that it adds, it, it is very simple. I can explain it in one line. It adds a voice search functionality to your website. So if you want a user to go, uh, if a user visits your website, let it be an e-commerce or a blog, etc. All he has to do is just talk about, or just say, if you're running a clothing store, he just has to say jackets and the page magically goes to jackets. And then he needs to select his jacket and the user just has to click a button and say, check out. And all the page does is goes to check out. And that's just two of the features of Voxpow. There's so many more features. And we'll talk about Voxpow later. But first, we're going to cover Google Tag Manager. And we are getting questions right now already. And Petru is asking, what are you going to cover today? So Simeon, that's a question for you. OK, yeah. So today, we are starting from the, the, the last webinar when where we finish. So we are cover more advanced topics, like, for example, what is data layer? Uh, I'll show some other things which are very important. For example, how you need to to use the debugger and how you need to to write a custom JavaScript functions, not in the JavaScript uh, programming language. I will not show that, but just to show how to verify they work and so on. So I explained the difference between the pure HTML, the static HTML, and the JavaScript render and content. And yeah, I'll show a lot of examples. We will share a little. Uh, a little code snippets book. So uh, you take a look of some examples and yeah, I hope it will be interesting for you guys. I'm sure the webinar got interesting when you said you're going to share some snippets and we are already having questions. 
which is effectively use of Google Tag Manager in an e-commerce site. And Kapil, we're going to cover all of this and much more in today's uh, webinar about Google Tag Manager. And in the first webinar, guys, if you have missed the first webinar of the Google Tag Manager, we have covered uh, topics uh, like uh, installing Google Tag Manager in WordPress, how you can set it up and going through the initial settings. This is the part two of the webinar where we are diving deep into the topic of Google Tag Manager. So Petru says thanks and thank you, Petru. If you have any more questions, guys, just leave them in the comments down below. Keep the questions coming and we're going to answer all your questions in the end. And we're not leaving without answering any single question of yours. And <laughs> Simeon, are you excited for today's webinar? Yeah, I'm excited. I want to, to share everything, but yeah, we'll try to, we'll do my best to, to do it. So yeah. I'm awesome. Excited. So guys, all you have to do is keep your phones aside for the next uh, 45 minutes and Simeon is going to walk you through and share stuff about Google Tag Manager. So Simeon, anytime you're ready, let's share the screen. I think we have done too much of talking. Okay, I'll just explain the next uh, webinars because we'll have uh, next week, uh, probably we'll have a SEO topic webinar. And after that, uh, I'll share today a little form for you guys to, to enter your websites. And the final webinar, which will be from two weeks from now, uh, we will make uh, live audits for your website. So p uh, please, you can write down your websites in this form. I'll show you it now. And uh, after two weeks, we will make a live audit because uh, I think it is the approach and the thing you, you like when you see your website and when you see real examples, not uh, only theory. So I decided that this is uh, useful for the audience. And yeah, I'll show this now. So guys, Simeon is going to audit your website live in the upcoming webinar. So we're going to share a link where you can leave your website and we're going to choose your website and we're going to audit your website live so you can fix all the errors or whatever that Simeon finds and it's all happening live guys. I think this is the first time in PitchGround we are taking live websites and we are doing live audits in front of the audience and I'm so excited about this. Guys, if you want your website to be audited in the upcoming webinars, which are crazy, we have planned some webinars about technical SEO, etc. And if you want your website to be audited, we're going to share a link at the end of this webinar where you can leave all your, where you can leave your website and we're going to choose the website to be audited live. So that's interesting, Simeon. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting with a presentation. Awesome. Okay. Okay, and all good? Yes, designed to work together. That's what we're okay. doing. Okay, yep, exactly. So I first start with the links, if you, will, you have time to write it down. So the first link is this one. It will be shared in the comments, so you'll find it uh, right away. But it is a really simple form where you can enter just your website uh, URL address and your name and there we um, will choose some websites to perform live audits in two weeks from now approximately and the second link is a code snippets which i'll open and talk on these topics later on in this webinar so uh, those are the two links for today uh, and they will be shared on the comments so you find it easy i hope yes uh, so, yeah uh, so for the Google Tag Manager, last time we talked, what is Google Tag Manager? We said that it is important to use it in today's world because it helps you to organize everything in order to be easy switchable, easy configurable, and in order to have everything in one place. So we, uh, we perform some steps in order to, to get this screen. And when you have everything set up, you have everything installed on your website. You have this dashboard where you can uh, perform some actions. So for example, we can go to a container which we uh, leave for, for a last time. We, we, end, uh, we end up here. And you have here on the left side uh, some things like tags, triggers, variables, and folders. So it's important to understand the difference between all of those and to know that the tag is basically the thing which performs the action. 
the trigger is the the way the action is uh, is set up and sent it from your website and the variables are a little snippets and code box which help you to build your tags and triggers so variables are just like the naming site it is variables but they can be uh, different types so uh, let me open the debugger first to show uh, something really important because when you work in Google Tag Manager and basically when you're performing some changes on your website or you want to get in deeper in uh, to the topic how the web work basically you should know one important thing so the the thing you see on this screen is a website which already uh, render all the JavaScript so for example Chrome uh, the browser Chrome give you the opportunity to inspect and to see how the, the code looks like in your browser. So you can go and press inspect and it is the Chrome console where you can do a lot of stuff and basically perform a lot of checks to see how your website working, to see some errors and so on. It is important to know that this here, it is a JavaScript rendered content. So it means that here we have the pure HTML, which is basically the static HTML of your website. And you have some rendered JavaScript uh, objects and so on. So it is really important to understand the difference between here, the inspector, and the other thing is just view page source. So there are two, uh, two things to know uh, this this view source is the pure html which is basically coming from the server and the other one is the html uh, and javascript which is rendered in your browser so there is a difference between between these two things and it is pretty important to know this uh, when you work with google tag manager and basically with almost everything which includes uh, digging into websites, including search engine optimization and so on. So here we have the static HTML, which can be very easy catch bit, uh, from every function which we you could use with JavaScript. So here, if you see the content of your website here in the static HTML, so it is pretty easy to catch it with some custom JavaScript function and to convert this one into Google Tag Manager variable. So if, for example, some of the issues I faced in the past are that if some content is not included here in the pure HTML, it is not so easy to catch it and to, uh, to set up and to make a variable in Google Tag Manager. So in short, the difference between JavaScript rendered content and pure content which you have from your server. Uh, the other important things here are the console where you can see some errors if you have. So for example, some uh, some JavaScript is not working or you have some resource which is missing and here the page tries to load it, but it is not uh, existing. Here you see some important errors and you can debug what is happening into your website. And here we have a lot other things to, uh, to take a look. We will probably talk uh, for them on the live audit because here you see, you can see all the requests the page are performing. So for example, if you want to see how your images are loaded, you could select this one, uh, for example, only images and see how everything is loaded. It is very important to know all these features in Chrome because sometimes uh, when you're debugging something, including Google Tag Manager, you need to know what is happening and to have all this in your hands. So uh this is like an overview because it's important to know the difference and google tag manager basically uh, works better if you try to catch a content which is in pure javascript and uh let me dig into this uh, e-commerce website and show what uh, variables triggers we have installed last time i talked about this scroll depth event so we can take a look here to to see what is happening. Uh, we have this uh, trigger, which is basically trigger type scroll depth. And uh, it uh, fires when the page body class contains uh, some something. So it is extracted for the page uh, content, the pure HTML content. 
And if you want to see it, for example, you can go it. Uh, it's the purpose is to extract the content of the page. And here, if you go, for example, to a blog article and check the page source, you will notice if you perform a search for the body, like the body tag, you see that this body tag has a, an example class which we need to catch up and make a Google Tag Manager variable. So the first step here is to check in the pure HTML with the view source to be sure that this content is really presented on your body class because uh, one of the approaches you can use is to check it here in the inspector. But I all the time prefer to check the pure HTML to be sure that it is really presented because as you know, JavaScript can render and can add an additional classes, attributes and so on. So basically it can change all the HTML. So it's pretty important to be sure that this class here with where you see it is still presenting here. So you need to be sure that this class here is presented in the view source in the pure HTML. And I show you how to check this. The next step here is to perform a, a variable, which is basically page body class. And here we just say that these variables contain some specific, uh, some specific string. So basically text and this text match the block pages on your website. So we want the scroll depth only for block pages and to have, for example, 50% and so on. Now, the most inter interesting here is how the, these variables are set up. And we are going to these variables. So I explained you last time that we have some built-in variables and we have user-defined variables. In most of the time, we need to use user-defined variables if we want to perform some uh, advanced action, let's say. So we have a lot of built-in already, like clicks. We can track all the clicks on different elements, the target and the text, but we want to define some, some other variables like a device type. I will show you, it is pretty interesting and some other things like, for example, page body class, which I'm talking about. So if we check check this one, we'll see that it is anonymous, uh, anonymous JavaScript function. So basically the format of the function is all the time the same. So basically you need to uh, write this one, the function, and uh, you have the body and you have a one return. So this syntax is very similar to all uh, is very used in all formats for for Google. So basically, if you want to to make up some Google Ads uh, scripts, you can do it in the same format. So it's pretty important to to understand these uh, little functions because you need it right away if you start digging more uh, in Google Tag Manager, in Google Ads, and so on. So it is pretty uh, important format, and basically. Here we just get the element by, by class name, uh, get the first element in the array and get the class name. And after that, we just return this body class. So it is two lines of code, but this code should uh, allow us to match basically all pages in our website if our URLs are basically not including some some information. So for example, in this case, we don't have uh, something to identify by URL. So if we have something like this uh, block, we will sure that this one is a block article, but we don't have it. We have a pure URL and we need to make a variable to extract the information and to pass it into Google Tag Manager variable. And after that, uh, with trigger, we need to match the specific case we need. So maybe it sounds complicated, but it is um, uh, really easy to understand uh, if you spend some time on this. Uh, another thing you need to, uh, to know is that, for example, if you have an e-commerce website, like in this case, you have two options, basically. For sure, you need to track uh, the conversions. And you have two options depending on your content management system. Even you uh, you use the modules for 
getting e-commerce and send all the events. And the other option is to set up Google Tag Manager and to try to, to implement all these actions by yourself. My proposal is all the time uh, looking for a good plugin, which will give you the basics and just extend these uh, functionalities with Google Tag Manager. Because for example, if you want to set up everything uh, like in tracking in Google Tag Manager, it is possible for uh, almost every website, but you need to spend a lot of time and uh, uh, it is not always convenient when you have, for example, WordPress plugin, which is can give you the e-commerce tracking very easy. Uh, but it is the true only for e-commerce e-commerce tracking. So, for example, there is no plugins to uh, to track, uh, add to favorites or add to compare and so on. So basically, you need to use it only for the core features. And if you want to extend it, you need to use uh, Google Tag Manager, like I'll show you. So here we are in product page, and we want to start implementing the custom implementation of different variables. So one of those variables could be uh, the product ID. So for example, uh, we, uh, we can go here and just perform a search that would match our, uh, our criteria. And we will see, so for example, it's a product page and most of the time something uh, you, you can find something which describe basically what you want. So for example, we want to, to get the product ID. And if we type product ID with slash or underscore, we'll find something which is <clears throat> already in your uh, website, but uh, you can uh, additionally check if this one is in pure HTML, like I said in the beginning. So it is just view source and just check if we have the same value here. So it is important because you can get into very deep uh, problems. For example, you set up everything, everything is working, but you cannot see the value on your tags uh, and your variables especially. So it is pretty important to check this and to be sure that product ID is here <clears throat> on the static HTML. And what you can do uh, then, uh, here it is a, a little bit uh, JavaScript again, but it's uh, self discriminatory You need to get the element by name and just return the numeric representation of the value attribute. So it sounds uh, maybe complicated if you first time get into this, but the, the good news is that you can play around and spend some time uh, trying to find out the best code snippet which will work for your specific case. So for example, if you open the console, you can clear a little bit and uh, when you go here, you remember that we need to catch up this, uh, this element by name. And with a little bit of searching, you can, uh, you can find that there is a, a document a tree and you, can, you have some additional uh, functions which you can get the elements by name. So basically you get this one and you, uh, you can check it. What is what it is about? It is a note list, which is basically a HTML object, uh, and you can just return the value. So it is uh, here. It is not returned, but we can just print it out. It is returned when it is in Google Tag Manager, and you can identify that here we have this value, which is corresponding to the to our product ID. Uh, so some uh, some guys could ask where do you need this because if you want if you have already implemented uh, for example e-commerce tracking maybe you don't need to to do this complicated task and to write JavaScript and so on but for some cases for example if you have a Facebook feed you will want to have the product IDs and to match it in your product catalog in Facebook. So it is possible to make it very, uh, very easy with Google Tag Manager. So for example, you need to define this product ID. You can continue uh, with adding new and new uh, variables in Google Tag Manager. So you see it is another code snippet where you can 
uh, just go here and for example here it is the model so you just want to catch up the model and here this one is the model in this specific case so basically you just need to extract this one and in this case uh, we match it by the query selector so query selector is basically something you can extract from every HTML page and it is uh, possible to get this. For example, if you press right button and copy here, it is selector. But basically, if you check wh what is here, you will see that it is very long string. But what you need most of the time, if it is not repeating on every uh, HTML. So the last thing is most of the time useful and it will get the job done. So it depends a lot of your website structure, but usually this whole query selector could be uh, shortened up to this. So it will work like it in this case and we just get the inner text. So here the command is like this. We want to get the model and we want to uh, to have the query selector of this specific diff. And when you press diff, uh, this and check the model variable, you see that you have something which corresponds to this one here. So uh, this one is the basic of extracting different things from your web page. Uh, I could say it it's maybe sounds complicated to write down these functions, but if you spend some time to, to for example, play around and see that with right button, you go to this specific uh, string here on your page. And when you press the right button on this element, you can copy the selector or even the expat. So expat is another uh, type of selectors where you can uh, select the different things from your uh, <clears throat> from your page. So it is used a lot in scrapping. So if you are dealing with scrapping different type of content, you for sure need to know about uh, CSS selectors and expats. So it's also possible to just copy the expat here. So that's the basic to, to define uh, different uh, variables here. And the most important is that when you're ready and you want to test, you need to press the, here the submit button and push your changes to be live. So when you do this, you it is good idea all the time to press the preview button button and to be sure that you see all the variables contained in your debugger. So we we switch this on and we are going to this page. Yep, something you you should notice is that. It is a different debugger. So basically we have now two debuggers. One is from Tag Manager and one is the Google Chrome console. Uh, most of the time you need only one uh, at the specific uh, point of time. So we can close this and just uh, see what is happening here. So we are at product page and we can go uh, to variables to confirm what we have, we, we click here the window loaded. So basically it means that all content and all JavaScript render, and it is the, the way you need to, uh, to debug some variables. And when you do this, you scroll down, you, uh, you can see a lot of variables which are defined by uh, by default, so click ID, it is normal here to be undefined because this one is a variable which is built in in Google Tag Manager and it is basically a click. So we we find, we, we search for clicks on this specific page and when we are on window loaded, we don't have click, which is normal. But if we go here to each click we perform, we see that we have a new event here coming and so on. So what I try to do is here to show that these variables are just extracting the content uh, with the custom JavaScript 
and you can see that everything is here and you can use it in tax which is more important so for example uh, we have here the variables they are here uh, we confirm that they uh, show the good value so this is extracted from the html and what we can do is for example use those in the different tags or triggers uh, so how to use them in triggers uh, a little example is uh, let me show again is this scroll page depth uh, where we use one variable which is page body class and we said that we this page body class contains uh, a code uh, text representation which we confirm that is only uh, only available on block pages so it's important to to check it manually and to see that it is presented only on the block pages and uh, yeah this is an example how to use it for triggers here you have uh, the defined uh, variables and you can use it like normal but you can use it also for tags uh, so for example let me see if we have somewhere uh, i'll show you the syntax let me find yeah you can perform some text uh, tests but if you want it for example if you have a facebook feed and so on you can uh, include some variables with these uh, two opening brackets and you basically see a list with all your oh, uh, with this one we will not see it anymore but you'll see basically a list with all your variables including your defined variables uh, custom so you you see the product id product model and so on so you uh, see in practice a lot of uh, services which want to include some some dynamic information for example product id for example product price and so on so you can very easy do like this so in this uh, example we can uh, make it like that and when we submit this um uh, yep let me see so we will be sure that this product id is still working if we are on product h you need to write descriptive name and so on so basically that is the way you use the variables you already defined in attack so opening bracket you get the list with all your variables and you define what you want to do in your tag. So for example, if you have a Facebook catalog, you can do it right, like this. Uh, let me search for a, a website where we have something like this implemented already and which is working. Uh, here we have a different type of tags and there for Facebook, uh, just to be sure, yeah here we don't have uh, uh, dynamic values but it is the way to add it so for example uh, let we come back to this example so for example if you want to add it in attack you just need to open the bracket and put this variable and choose from the list uh, something important and something interesting at least for me is that if you want to define a variable which basically show you if the device of the user is desktop or mobile uh, you don't have it such so if you go here it is already defined variable so you don't have a variable for this you cannot say that the user which is to your website is from desktop or mobile so it, it was a problem for me because I wanted to be sure that I can implement something depending on the user which is on the website so if he is using mobile device i wanted to show a pop-up or not show a pop-up or something like this and here on this code snippets which i'll open now i will show you uh, a little pdf document where you can find 
links to different code snippets. Uh, I write it down from, from scratch. So you can go here and see how they are, uh, they are working. So the first one is there in, in GitHub. So it is, I call it pro breadcrumbs. So the goal here is that if you want to implement something like schema.org and you don't have other way to do it, you can you can maybe try to do it with Google Tag Manager. It is not the recommended way because it is JavaScript render and content, but uh, it is if you don't have an option, it could be uh, it could be an option maybe uh, because Google Bot parses uh, JavaScript usually, but the Google Bot which parses JavaScript is a little bit slower, so that's why it is not the recommended way to do this. But it is possible to do this, and you can, uh, if you want. It is basically implementation of, sch of schema.org, JSON, uh, LD JSON, uh, with Google Tag Manager. So this is just a normal code snippet. And if you want to implement it, for example, a schema.org uh, markup, you can go here and just make your new tag. And this new tag could be custom HTML. Most of the time, if you implement such code snippets, you need custom HTML tag and just paste it, define where to trigger, uh, give it a good name and just publish after you are ready. So almost every of those snippets, which I'm showing you now are custom HTML. And uh, if you want to install some additional uh, libraries on your website, it is most of the time custom HTML is the right tag for you. Uh, so this one is the pro brand comps. We will not publish this right now. Uh, yeah, I was talking about type of device, which is more interesting. So it is a little bit code snippet. You can already, I hope, detect that here we have this anonymous function and uh, we have the return. So basically <clears throat> it is a custom variable uh, because we, when where you have this syntax, it is most likely to be a variable. So this one is just checking the window width. And if the width is less than 520 uh, uh, pixels, we can say that this is mobile and so on. So it is maybe not 100% correct because we are using the window inner width, but most of the time it works and you basically uh, see what is the content, uh, the, the screen content of your users. We can test it because uh, we have a way to do this. When you go here and go to console, as you remember here, we have a possibility to check and to, to confirm once again that our code snippet will work. And if we press here, we'll see that in my case, the width of the screen is like this. Something else which is also important is to verify the opposite case going in mobile or different screen resolution, clear the stuffs which are not necessary here and just press this again, you see that the value is different. So basically it should work. And if a user comes from uh, such device where the width is 360 and here, let me check what we defined. So if we, it is less than 500, we'll say that this user is using mobile and it seems to be working. Let me copy this one. I think here it is already implemented. Uh, we are going to variables because it is a variable because we need to have a possibility to detect if the user is using mobile or desktop. So it should be a variable. And uh, let me check. Yeah, we have it in device type. So basically you just need to, um, to add it to your Google Manager if you plan to use it, this one. Uh, you can confirm that it is working if you go to debugger also, not this one, but 
the debugger from Google Tag Manager. If this page loaded, yep, and we can give it a refresh. Sometimes you cannot see the debugger so easy, but hopefully it is here. And yeah, go to window loaded variables and inspect what value we have here for the uh, for the device of the user device type we have desktop so it is working and you can just copy this one and paste it in your variable and your google tag manager and it should work for your case uh yeah here we have a exit pop-up because you may maybe already uh look for a plugin to make it an exit pop-up but you can also do this in google tag manager it's maybe seems strange to you but it is possible if you don't have a good plugin for example your uh, system don't uh, support custom pop-ups and so on so i found a library in the internet which is basically a javascript library and it is uh, old but it is working good uh, so basically it is a javascript because google tag manager is connected with javascript libraries so you can uh, read all those and find out how you can make uh, your exit pop-up. I write it here for you. So basically it is an example of this exit pop-up. It is a tag basically where you just include this installation libraries and you send, uh, you initialize the libraries performing some, uh, some HTML content where you, you have it defined. From here, you can take a look how it's defined exactly or just copy paste and replace the values. And in addition, I implement a function which you can send the data to your Google Analytics account. So basically, if someone clicks on your exit pop-up, you will see this in Google Analytics, which was very important for me. And that's why I implement this function and how to implement this one. So basically it is good to understand all here the documentation and just copy this one. I think it is already implemented here, but let me confirm once again. Uh, yeah, we have it exit pop-up. So it's basically the same, we change it values. Here we have the same tag like in uh, my code snippet, but here, uh, we have uh, this pop-up and this HTML content, which is basically the pop-up with the different values. So you just need to choose your uh, image and so on and to basically change this part here. So this need to be changed for your website. This one is universal. So it works for every Google Analytics and it sends events there. What is interesting here, we have the pop-up and we have only page, uh, the firing trigger is a specific page. When you go here, we uh, you can see something interesting that we defined the trigger to be only on device type, which is desktop and only a page path, which is some specific URL, which contains. So we can give it a try uh, to see if this work or it's not working anymore. So we are going to this website. Uh, the, the rule we defined is to a specific page. You can adapt it for your case, but it is here for this one. And device should be desktop. If it's not work, we'll try incognito because sometimes it's not working fine. And the idea is when you start to go up, yeah, and the exit pop-up, is show up. Uh, some of you could say that it is really ugly. That's true. It's not perfect, but you can make it on your, uh, on your, uh, depends how you like it, uh, reading this one and adapting your, uh, here, the, the code I show you. So basically it is show pop-up. And if I press this one, I should see everything in analytics, hopefully. I will change to different language a little bit just to see. 
it's send event. I think the event was if you click the button, but yeah. Um, so yeah, if you click at the, the button, which was the image, you will see that in Google Analytics, you will see the event. And here you can identify the exit pop-up, which is the event you triggered. So you can even make such things, which is exit pop-ups only with Google Tag Manager. And you have uh, the code snippet, which will allow you to do so. Uh, the script depth, I will not go in details in every of those uh, because we, we are not having too much time, but uh, they are here so you can use it when you have the ability to do so. So here it is the, the just second, the scroll depth trigger. It is only uh, built in in your Google Tag Manager. It is a nice article where you can find how to, to implement it in your uh, Google Tag Manager, but it is pretty straightforward and I show you uh, all the things you need. So basically you need the trigger type and the percentage and you can send the events to Google Analytics. In this case, we, we see here, it is sent only for pages which are part from the blog section. So something you need to know is that uh, it is really important if you don't want to mess up your analytics account is that we have some events which are non-interaction events in Google Analytics. So, so what is interaction? Interaction could be if someone loads an additional page or something like this, uh, but we have a different type of events which are non-interaction and they just used to be for sending information like for example, scroll depth and so on. So if someone scroll to your uh, bottom of the page, you don't see this one to be measured as interaction, but you just want to send it in Google Analytics because if it is measured like an interaction, you can uh, interfere your bounce rate and you need to know about this. So that's why I put this one here. And yeah, e-commerce tracking, I show you uh, some of snippets, but it is uh, an additional snippets where if you want to implement data layer, so data layer is a basically a JavaScript object where you can store a different variables and send them to analytics if you want, or just store them in data layer. So basically it is a JavaScript object. And here you, you have a snippet, for example, how you can make it uh, and how you can push a variable to data layer and you have some other uh, snippets which you can take a look. And I give you uh, a modules for popular CMS because if you have a WordPress WooCommerce website, most of the time you don't want to implement everything from scratch to in order to have the e-commerce tracking, but you need a module which do all the heavy tasks and you just need to uh, implement add to cart or some uh, other uh, features which you want to track, but not everything from scratch. It is possible to do it with Google Tag Manager, but it is really hard uh, to do it completely. And the last scripts are very, very easy. Uh, so for example, you maybe know that in Google Analytics, you have custom dimension and custom metrics. We already have a webinar for Google Analytics, but uh, custom dimensions and custom metrics is a way to extend the functionality of Google Analytics and add your custom uh, dimensions or metric, depending what you want, very easy. So it is a code snippet which, which you can use to add some ad additional dimension to your Google Analytics account. So it is pretty straightforward, not so uh, not so hard to understand. Here, this one is a variable you need to define. So basically you can send whatever you want, like a dimension in Google Analytics with this code snippet. The first step is just define this in Google Analytics. And after that, you can send it very easy with Google Tag Manager. And you can make it uh, the variable. It is an example variable, which you can take a look and to see how uh, an example could be extracted. It is still the anonymous function. And here we have some calculation to, to extract basically the value from the website and pass it to Google Analytics. 
Uh, so this one is shared with you. And if you want, you can take a look. Uh, and yeah, maybe it can be complicated at first glance, but it is uh, need some time to investigate and to dig into. And I'm sure you handle. And yeah, that's for for this part for Google Tag Manager. It is a big topic, so it cannot be covered in two hours. But I think and a lot you of... have explained it quite well. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Uh, because people have been glued to their screens right now. I've been seeing the live count and they are just like listening to whatever you're saying. So Simeon, some of them were asking about sharing the links. Can you share the links in my private chat so that I can share them in the comment section? Yep. Uh, so they're like this. Where to, just a second. Yes, you can share the links in my private chat. And okay. yeah, screen sharing is disabled, so yeah. Okay, yeah. It is private chat, so I need to disable it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The knowledge that you're gonna get from these webinars isn't private, guys. It's specifically for you. And we want you to implement what all you're seeing right now. We've done a webinar on Google Analytics. We have done a webinar on Google Tag Manager. This is the part two of the Tag Manager webinar that you're watching right now. And if you haven't watched part one and if you've suddenly joined this webinar, then I highly, highly suggest you watch the part one and then watch the part two. And we have webinars coming up every single week for the next couple of weeks until VoxPow is over. And we have to say goodbye to the deal, which makes us really sad. But if you have any doubts about Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, or the technical SEO topics that we're going to cover in the next value webinar series, then you can always, always reach out to us and we will solve your queries. That is Team Pitch Ground and Team Voxpaw. So Simeon, I still didn't get your private chat. I am waiting for the links to be shared to our users in the comment uh, section. Okay, did I send to you? Um, all it's right, I got them in the messenger, so let me yeah. just send it across. Links have been posted in the comment section down below on literally every platform that you're watching it on. If you're watching it on YouTube, check the comments. If you're watching it on Facebook, also check the comments. And we have posted two links over there. First link is where you can submit your website for a live SEO audit by Simeon. That's we're going to do it two weeks from now. So yes, you can submit your website in, and we're going to do a live SEO audit. Guys, this is your chance to get your SEO audit done and fix your SEO errors and learn how you can actually do an SEO audit. So guys, the webinars that are coming up in the future are gonna be really, really exciting. Lot of learning, so you do not wanna miss them. And guys, tomorrow we have a very, very big announcement to make. It's a huge announcement and you're gonna love that. Any guesses what that announcement could be? leave it in the comment section down below. That's the first link where you can get the SEO audits done if you enter your website. The second link is the Google Tag Manager useful code snippets. You can actually, uh, Insimion has explained how you can use it. If you have joined in late, you can watch the replay of this webinar, which will be live on our Facebook page, Facebook uh, group, and also on our YouTube channel. So he has shared some useful code snippets that you can use for e-commerce, for CMS, for custom dimensions, exit pop-ups, et cetera. That's a lot. And this is the place to learn Google Tag Manager, SEO, et cetera. And if you're tuning in, you are lucky. So we, are, we have users like Shweta. She's asking how to use Google Tag Manager. Shweta, I would highly, highly suggest go watch our previous webinar on Google Tag Manager. You can find it on our YouTube channel, that is Pitch Ground, and you can also find it on our Facebook page. So if you have any more doubts regarding Google Tag Manager, 
or any SEO related query, you can always leave us in the comment section down below. Simeon, now comes the time where we showcase um, a little bit of our favorite tool, Voxpow, and yep. I showcase my favorite feature, which is just telling the voice live and then the page changing. So we're going to share a screen right now. And um, we're going to go to, are we going to go to an e-commerce website or are we going to go to Voxpow website? We can go to, to e-commerce website because we need to, to show here. Last time it was to Voxpo. Uh, now we can try on this one. Yes. Yep. Guys, if you're having an e-commerce website, we're going to show you the power of Voxpow. And you can implement the exact same thing on your own e-commerce website. And once you watch this demo, you're going to understand how powerful this one simple code snippet, one simple tool can add to your website. So Simeon, let's uh, get on with this. Yeah, the first thing is that it's pretty easy to install it with Google Tag Manager. So it is just an example how it is look like. It is a custom HTML tag. You just install here, define which pages you want to use and just save and publish your settings. So it is really easy to install. And when you are done, you can just go to your website open this one and set jackets. Here we don't have jackets in this, this specific, case, specific case. Let me find out something. Jacket. Okay, so since it's suits, all yeah. right. Yeah, depends how you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we set up a voice command, which can be triggered by jackets. We are going directly to this page, uh, but currently we are using the search one. So for example, I can show you on another website. Here it is a, a static website. It is for website design. And here you can see the new feature with, which is pulsing here. And if you set WordPress, and it goes to a page with WordPress articles. So basically depends what you set up from the admin, you can do whatever you want on your website. And uh, it's all happening live in front of you guys. And as you can see, it's happening on a WordPress website. So if you're having a WordPress installation and you're worrying if Voxpow is, in, is gonna work or not, then yes, Voxpow fully supports all WordPress websites. And yes, you can actually use Voxpow on your WordPress website. And if you have any, um, you know, queries or doubts or finding difficulties installing Voxpow on your website, you can always, always reach out to us on Pitchground and team Voxpow that Simeon. And we will be more than happy to set it up and walk you through Voxpow what all features Voxpow actually has because just the voice feature is one of the feature. The other features include sentiment analysis. You can actually understand what your user is searching. That's NLP data, whether he's searching for a positive, whether he's searching for negative, etc. All the AI behind it, it's doing. You don't have to do anything. Let you can just install Voxpow and let Voxpow do the magic for you. Am I right, Simeon? Yeah, exactly. So basically, when you install it and the user speaks to your website, you can uh, check out what is their sentiment depending on what they search for or what commands they send. So yeah, it is behind and it works fine. And yeah, a lot of things. Uh, and if you have any troubles installing or understanding how it works, because it is maybe in the in the beginning, it is uh, hard to understand how it works. But when I show you, I think you be uh, familiar and you know already everything. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So it's like, imagine, we are talking to our computer, our website, specifically our website. And if you're having a thousand visitors and if hundred users decide to just click that button, 
the cute mic button at the bottom and decide to just talk and interact with your website live wouldn't that be really amazing you could understand 100 different scenarios 100 different people's opinions and the sentiment analysis would actually reveal what these 100 different people want and that would be really really powerful if you ask my opinion that is really powerful and you combine this with uh, you know any other tool that you're using it also integrates super well with google analytics and you can also see all the queries that are searched by your users in your google analytics dashboard and yep. guys yep. that is one amazing thing about Vox Power. So if you yeah, have like, and, and what I invite you to do is try out Vox Power on your website. Let's let your visitors use it. And if you find it hard or if you don't find it useful, you can always hit that refund button and you have nothing to lose. But we are sure that you're going to like what Vox Power has to offer. To your website because it's not just about a mic button floating at the bottom of your website it's about adding to the user experience enhancing the user experience and if you've seen my interview with Mian, you he would have told that it's his aim to add this functionality to every single website and enhance the user experience of every single person and change the way the web is browsed forever if that's you then Yes, you can grab VoxPow on once in a lifetime deal, which will be going away very soon. So I invite you to try it, check it out. And if it's not fitting your you know, users or if, you, if you're finding it confusing and always reach out to us. And if you still don't find it good, you always have the option to refund. And that's the pitch ground guarantee you get by purchasing every single product with every single product on pitch ground. So Simeon. This brings us to the end of today's webinar. That's one hour in. And for people who are uh, who have been tuning in, uh, for a quick recap, we covered Google Tag Manager part two. And the part one webinar, you can always, always find it on replays on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Facebook group, literally everywhere. And you can always watch part one, part two, and learn about Google Tag Manager. In the upcoming webinars, we're going to talk about technical SEO. We're going to talk about live SEO audits that we're going to do for your website. So we have already left some links in the comment section down below. You can always check them out. We have shared about the um, Google Tag Manager useful snippets, and you can also insert your website, and we're going to do a live SEO audit for you and any more queries we are always always here to help you out in seo in vox power regarding everything and we are getting a ton of likes from sarun from keshkale from jason solomon who's our you know top fan is he has that badge on facebook and he always attends all our webinars ankit patel sushil goenka everyone who's hitting likes and engaging with this webinar thank you so much for joining today's session so Simeon any last words before we end this webinar uh, yeah I thank you for for the attendance hope you like it and talk to you soon please don't forget about the next webinars we be, before uh, yeah because we will share a lot of uh, new things and we will talk on totally different topics which are SEO and please feel free to fill up the form and we will choose some websites. It's probably not uh, everyone will be audited, but we will, mm, I'll do my best to choose uh, those ones which uh, can bring uh, can show a lot of uh, examples of, of uh, errors and so on. Guys, you have to enter your website fast because if that get list gets filled up, we're going to choose the top five websites. And guys, you believe me, the website count is going to get filled very easily once I share it in the group. So if you're if you're in the webinar right now, I suggest you go to bit.ly slash Voxpow um, SEO audits. You find the link in the comment section down below and fill your website in because 
we're not going to cover every website we're only going to cover a few websites so before the list gets filled you have to uh, fill your website and for the live seo audit so that you can improve your seo scores and i'm going to see you in our future webinars we have something exciting coming up tomorrow it's 25th of september it's a very special day for pitch ground and you will know it tomorrow once you see it and we're also launching new products uh next week regarding funnels we are also excited about that and right now once we end this webinar i want you all to join us at twitter we are having a new conversation that is hashtag pg chat on twitter so find pitch ground on twitter we are live on twitter right now having a conversation about um you know uh udit and let let me share my screen and show you the twitter chat that we are having right now so can you guys see my screen great so as you can see here we are you in the pg chat we just launched our own twitter chat tonight and looking forward for you to interact in the pg chat we are talking about the topic of building remote teams and it's currently live right now so guys i'm ending the webinar right now and let's join uh, the conversation continue the conversation on twitter and thank you so much for joining in today's webinar thank you simian and thank you all for your attendance see you in our next webinars we have so much to cover see you see you bye